I'm Susan McGinnis in Las Vegas at the National Clean Energy Summit 2.0. I'm joined now by Jeff Bruin. He's CEO and founder of Poet, an ethanol manufacturing company. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Now, so far at this summit, um, let me give me your assessment of uh, ethanol's place. We, we watched a two and a half hour discussion of all things energy from some major heavy hitters in, in the energy world, and uh, ethanol certainly had its place. Well, ethanol today, is, as you know, is a major player in the gasoline supply. Today, uh, we get more gasoline equivalent BTUs from the ethanol industry than we get from Saudi Arabia. So we're already a very large participant in the fuel market, which I think a lot of people don't understand. In addition, if you look at future projections on yield, we're going to double the yield on corn in the next 20 years. In addition to cellulosic ethanol, which is very close to coming to fruition, we can make a significant impact on the fuel supply to this country over the next 10 to 20 years. Very now, significant. Some were surprised by uh, Secretary Chu's uh, comments about ethanol, that he had some major, he spent some major time today talking about agriculture in general and, uh, and ethanol. What, what was your thought about that? Does that, that? does that give the industry a boost? Well, certainly Secretary Chu did talk about land being available and the fact that, that there's land that's out there today uh, in America, and, and there's also a lot around the world, but there's there's land in America that's available to produce uh, additional crops for, for food and fuel. And so uh, today we're, we're not short of land, uh, our yields continue to go up, and there's tremendous opportunity to produce both uh, grain and cellulosic ethanol as we move forward. Now, you've been in this business since you were a teenager. Um, it must be quite a sight for you today to see what is happening uh, in energy in general and with ethanol. It has uh, been, a, been an interesting ride. Uh, what were you know, things like 14, you know, decades ago in this industry? Well, uh, at that time we were trying to get people to take us seriously. Uh, we were so small. Uh, but today, again, the industry has reached some critical mass. And we have detractors out there that are working hard uh, uh, because we're taking up some serious uh, market share from others. And so, uh, so I, I would have never foreseen the, uh, some of the battles we would have, you know, the food versus fuel issue, which is factual. Uh, and, and actually, uh, uh, if you look at that, you know, we've had almost no impact on the food supply or food costs, if you look at all the studies that are out there, yet that's become an issue for our industry. So, so the public relations aspects have become difficult, but yes. yet we have the truth on our side. We know that ethanol is clean and green. It's here today. You can go down and buy it at your local gas station. It's already cleaning up the environment significantly. It's already displacing almost 10% of our gas in this country, and the potential is much larger. So that, that when you look at the facts, ethanol is very, very exciting. Does it have a head start uh, in Infrastructure-wise, to our other fuels like natural gas. Well, uh, you know, natural gas has great infrastructure, ethanol has great infrastructure, but there are a lot of things being talked about here today, and, and it's great that we are talking about them that are out 20 or 30 or 40 years, and it's great that we're talking about those, but as a nation, we need, we need to correct this problem right now. Ethanol is available today. Uh, we, if we can move from 10 to 15 percent ethanol, right now there's an arbitrary cap on ethanol at 10 percent. Right now we have basically a 90 percent uh, mandate for gasoline. This is the gasoline. blend wall. I mean, yes. This is one of the reasons the industry has had a, a hard time. There are plant shutdowns, um, you know, a host of reasons, but that is one of them. Use. And the blend wall was mentioned at the summit as well. Exactly. We have 90 percent mandate today for gasoline. So short term we need to move to E15, uh, which uh, allow people to burn 15 percent ethanol in their cars, which gets the industry back on its feet again and then after that we need to get we need to work on a flex fuel vehicle mandate as well as getting blender pumps out there uh, which is a pump that allows consumers to have choice of multiple blends so they can put an E10, E20, E30 in their car based on price, performance, mileage uh, and what they want to put in their automobile so we want to give that consumer choice of the different types of ethanol. So you're looking for that 15 percent blend rate to to be part of um, energy legislation that's being crafted now? Or? Yes, yes, uh, yes we are definitely uh, working on that today. Uh, in addition we, we, we've submitted a waiver to the EPA in March. Uh, they have until December to decide on that for E15. It's the most, uh, we've, we've provided the most data in the history of the waiver process uh, mm -hmm. to prove that E15 works very well in all types of engines, uh, current automobiles as well as, uh, as well and, and, and non flexi vehicles, current automobiles as well as small engines uh, and, and other uh, engines. And tell us a little bit about what Poet is doing. Uh, Clean Skies News have visited a couple of plants in South Dakota. One of them is running on corn cobs. What, what's the next big thing in, in uh, technology? Well, without question, cellulosic ethanol technology is very close. Poet's working very hard on that. We've been working on it for, uh, for many, many years. And uh, we are very, very close to, to commercializing cellulosic ethanol production. Uh, there's, there's about a billion tons of cellulose um, in the country, which could produce 85 to 90 billion gallons of, of, of uh, ethanol today that could displace uh, all of the oil uh, that we get from other countries and even some that comes from the U.S. So the potential is, is massive. Uh, and in, in addition, uh, you know, we've still got grain-based ethanol and yields are projected to double on corn. That's another 13 billion bushels of grain that could produce another uh, 40 billion gallons of, uh, of ethanol and still put the protein right back into the market. Now, what we see long term is that the corn as a crop will provide 
we'll take the starch and the and the uh, cellulose from the from the cob and some of the stock and turn that into ethanol and then the protein goes right back into the food and feed market just like it does today all that protein goes right back out into the food and feed markets to create food sources and and, uh, and, and nutrition for animals. Okay, so you think it has a promising future? Summits like this one are, can only help? I've, I've been at this 22 years, and I think the future for ethanol is brighter today than it's ever been. All right, well, we'll keep following it. Jeff Broin, uh, CEO and founder of Poet, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm Susan McGinnis at the National Clean Energy Summit in Las Vegas, Nevada.